Hi everyone, this is Andrew Novins, and this is the sixth and final video in the series where we talk about how to take our MicroStation models out to the Unity game engine and then from there to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. As with the other videos, you should be watching it in conjunction with the written tutorial that I've posted on uh, Bentley's MicroStation visualization forum. Uh, in this final video, we will be talking about how to um, take our completed model out and view it in the uh, HTC Vive uh, headset. And then I'll just touch on a few uh, difficulties in the workflow that I've, I've had. So here we are in uh, Unity. Our project is complete and ready to be viewed. Um, there are two, uh, to view the project in VR, you first need to uh, start your Steam VR software and make sure that the headset is plugged in and turned on, the um, motion tracking base stations are turned on and uh, tracking, and that the hand controllers are turned on as well. Uh, and I'll, I don't have though the headset connected to this particular computer at the moment, but I have a, a video screen capture showing you what it all looks like. Um, but basically the, the procedure is to come up here and simply press this play button. And it just takes a few seconds for the scene to be loaded into the headset and then put the headset onto your head and experience the scene in one-to-one -one true to life scale. If your intent, if, if you've completed the project and your intent is to give it to a client who also has a, uh, a Vive headset, um, in that case, they probably don't have Unity installed. So you'll have to build a self-contained project. So to build this into a self-contained executable, you go to File, uh, Build Settings, um, you know, pick the, the platform that you want, set up a few default parameters, uh, and press the Build button. And that will create an executable along with a folder with all of the um, textures and additional data that's needed. And then all you do is give that to your client. They run the executable and put the headset on their head and they are, will find themselves in the scene as well. Um, but for this example, we won't be building the project. We'll just run it directly from Unity with this uh, play button. So to show you what that looks like, I have a video and here it is. So you can see here, on the bottom right, I've got the Steam VR software running, and uh, you, you have to make sure that the hand controllers, the base stations, and the headset are all turned on and ready to go. Um, this outline indicates that the headset is in standby mode, so but that's fine, it's, it's ready to go. So once this is all running, you simply come up here and press the play button, and the scene loads in your headset, and this shows you what your headset is, show, is seeing. Um, so all this shaking that you see at the moment is me putting the headset onto my head and those controllers, the hand controllers, uh, let's just have a look at the scene first. Now within this virtual environment, you are free to walk around your room, the physical room that you're standing in. Um, so in my case, it's about three meters square. And you can see in this video here, I think there's a little bit of movement in my room. Um, but if you want to move beyond the confines of your physical room, you will have to teleport from your current location to a new location. So here we see the hand controllers. Uh, so this is a, a virtual representation of the physical hand controller that's in my hand. Um, this big button is the touch sensitive uh, touchpad that we'll be pressing to initiate a teleport. And you'll see a, a green bezier curve emanating from the controller and then uh, landing somewhere on the landscape. <clears throat> so that's my thumb moving across the uh, touchpad. And then on the back, we have a, a trigger as well. So to initiate a teleport, we press the touchpad button and then aim where we would like to land. And then as soon as we let go of the button, we materialize in that spot. Now, like I said before, um, we, I, I've set up um, co a collision mesh, which stops my teleporter from teleporting beyond walls and beyond the floor. But there's nothing to stop us in our real room from walking forward and putting our head through walls or through certain bits of geometry. So here you can see 
me moving my head forward and then into the cavity of that tire and then pulling it out again. So the collision mesh is, is meant to really only stop the teleport system. It, it, it can't stop you from putting your head through geometry. Um, and it's surprisingly difficult. Not that it's difficult. It's surprising how often you don't want to put your head through walls. Um, so it's almost as though you don't need the collision mesh, but um, you do for the sake of the, the teleporter. So here we are, here I am just teleporting. And um, I'm, I'm about to teleport up to the next floor of this gantry. So the gantry has got the collision meshes for the floor. And remember the surface normal of the collision mesh for the floor is pointing up. So that means that my teleporter will be able to teleport through the bottom of that collision mesh. So basically what I'll be doing is teleporting up through the ceilings of each of these floors in the gantry. So here you can see the teleporter slowly I'm aiming it up and it's allowing me to teleport up through the ceilings. And now I've materialized on one of the floors of the gantry. Um, the sense of vertigo is really quite striking. Um, it's, it's For some people it's really difficult to stand near the edge or even step off the edge for that matter. And so I'll just teleport to the center and then I'll teleport up through the ceiling to get onto the roof of the gantry. So here you can see the rocket ship slowly moving down as I teleport up. So I'm on the, I'm on the top of the roof now. And um, so geometry in your scene, uh, so the controllers can, can go through the geometry as you can see here. Um, and, and you're free to put your head through the geometry as well. Um, but generally you don't do that. So here we are on the edge oh, and I've accidentally teleported down to the ground. So I will teleport back up to the roof. So here we are on the edge. And like I said, there's nothing if in your physical room. There's nothing to stop you from walking beyond edges. So there I walked off the edge and then teleported down to the next level. And then, um, so to teleport down to the ground, I simply aim the teleporter down at the ground and you can see where the landing pad is. And then when I let go, I find myself in that location. So um, that's pretty much all there is to moving around your scene. And when you're finished with checking out the scene, you come back to Unity and then you press the play button to stop the um, to stop the preview. So that's the view from the Unity um, editor. Uh, this is a video of the view uh, through the actual um, headset. Now th this isn't literally what's in the headset but this shows you the stereo images that are fed to the headset and then the headset will warp those for the lenses and, and you see the full 360 degree experience um, properly. Now th this is the SteamVR software dialog box um, sitting on top of the um, preview window here. Now I forgot to move this dialog box out of the way so it will continue to float in front of the view but you don't see this in your headset. Uh, this is just showing that the controllers are on and, and active and the, the base stations are on and active and the headset is in standby mode ready to be used. So uh, as long as all, all of this is valid we then press that big play button in Unity and then the project gets loaded into the headset as you'll see in a moment. So this is uh, more like what you see in the headset. And one of the things that you see in the headset will pop up in a moment, and that is this grid. So uh, the setup process for the Vive asks you to define the boundary of your room, which in my case was about three by three meters. And once the Steam VR software knows the boundary of, of your room, then Whenever you're in a game or a virtual environment like this and your headset or your controllers come close to a wall, um, the SteamVR software will, will bring up this grid, this blue grid, which represents the extents of your room. And um, it's a really nice feature. This gives you the confidence to move around your room knowing that you're not going to hit your, uh, walk into a wall and damage yourself or damage the wall. Um, and then as soon as you get near the wall, this pops up and you know that you should stop walking. So it's a great feature having this. It's, it's called the chaperone system. And this comes up whenever you're in 
proximity to your walls. So that's quite a nice thing that you see in your headset. Um, the rest of this is uh, pretty much the same as the previous video, except viewed through the, he the headset rather than through the Unity window. Um, okay, so uh, there's probably nothing new to show here. It's the same as the previous one, except through the camera headset. Um, I guess I could show you another project. So, so this is uh, another project that I've been working on. Uh, and again, this is the view through the headset. Uh, I press the play button in Unity and, and this gets loaded into the headset. And so now we're free to explore. And, and actually in this example, you'll see the teleport system and how um, it stops at the boundary of a wall. So in a moment, if I just fast forward a little bit, in a moment you'll see the teleport stop at the boundary of a wall. And <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to show what I actually wanted to show. Oh, okay. I'm just fast forward forwarding through this video. Oh, okay, uh, so this was me teleporting um, up to the roof of this project. So that's enough of that uh, preview. Um, so I, I guess I, I want to just talk about um, some of the known, some of the issues that I've come across in my workflow. So I've already uh, made a post on the uh, Bentley MicroStation forum. Uh, it's uh, it's this one here, the FBX export bottlenecks post. And so some of the issues that I've had with this workflow. Uh, they're, they're all spelt out here, but basically, um, I guess the MicroStation has various element types. So there's shapes and smart surfaces and complex shapes and so on. Um, I found an issue with the surface type. That's, that's what you get when you extrude a, a curve um, into a surface. The FBX exporter seems to create valid geometry, but for some reason Unity doesn't read uh, elements that are of type surface. So the workaround that I've come to is I use the convert brep command to convert anything that's a surface to a smart surface. And then that seems to work with Unity. Uh, so um, I don't know what the issue there is, but it would be nice if that was solved. Um, there's an issue with UV texture coordinates. Now, and, and this really comes into play when we want to do this option here called uh, bake global lighting. Um, for Unity to be able to bake a global lighting solution, it needs UV texture coordinates applied to every bit of geometry. Now, MicroStation's FBX exporter does, um, it does generate let me just bring up the material table. So MicroStation's FBX exporter does generate a valid UV texture coordinate if the material that you're using has a texture map applied to it. But if you you have materials that don't need a texture map, but rather are just flat colors, so for instance, if I made this just red and no material, then that material will be exported without a UV texture map coordinate system. And so then when you try to do a global um, or a baked global illumination solution within Unity, it will complain saying that you have geometry without a UV texture map applied to it or a valid texture map applied to it. So the workaround that I'm using, and, and I don't particularly like this workaround because it's kind of clumsy. Um, so here I have an example of material uh, paint red. Um, what I would like to do is just set this to red and, and be done with it, but I can't because 
the FBX exporter will not generate valid UV texture coordinates. So what I've done is I've attached a material to it, which is a simple, that's a JPEG image with just red in it. And that just feels clumsy. I'd rather just set color here and then have the FBX exporter by default export these materials with a maybe a one, well in fact what I did here is I, I generate a one by one meter um, texture. So it would be great if the uh, FBX exporter would generate valid UV texture maps on materials that don't use a texture. So that was one of the minor issues that I had. Uh, surface normal direction, I've already spoken about that in depth already, um, but I guess one of the things that would be nice is, so even though within MicroStation we can query the surface normal direction of one element or multiple elements at a time, it really would be nice if MicroStation had a display style, you know, just choose one of the display styles, where it would use single-sided rendering. So then at least we would approximate what Unity is doing with its single-sided rendering, and then we would see instantly which uh, shapes are invisible uh, from a particular direction. Um, even better than a display style that did single-sided rendering, what I wish we had was a display style which would show surfaces with their surface normals pointed towards the camera as red, and surfaces with the Oh no, sorry, uh, blue would be nice, or green maybe, with the surface normals pointing towards us, uh, towards the camera, and then red for surface normals that are pointing away from the camera. And and then all we would hopefully do then is just touch the red surfaces and their surface normals would, would change direction. That would be ideal. Um, so that's my wish, I guess, from Bentley. Uh, so surface normal direction and then mirror elements, I've already spoken about that. Um, I don't think there's much more I can add to what I've already mentioned before, uh, but this post explains it clearly. And that's about it. Um, so to finish up, I recommend virtual reality to everyone. Um, yeah, you won't regret it. Just go to this site. Go to this button and order one for yourself. You'll probably have it within the week. Um, it's fantastic. It really changes how the process of design will happen in the future. Um, I mean, architects are paid to be able to visualize their designs in their head, and we do a pretty good job of that. Uh, clients, on the other hand, aren't very good at that. So. I think clients will love this. Um, but as far as architects are con concerned as well, I I've had plenty of experiences where I thought I had a completed model. I've loaded it up into VR, and sure enough, I find problems and issues that I hadn't noticed before. So it's a great technology. I recommend it. Um, just bite the bullet and do it. And I'd love to hear your experiences on MicroStation's forums. Thanks a lot. This is Andrew Novins, and see you later. Bye.